amazing to see this many people here at this time in the morning in Palo Alto. And of course, I told Dr. Gilbert that we were honored to have him here, and he said he was honored to be here, and I told him that our students were doing work in Rwanda, Cambodia, the Middle East, Northern Ireland. Ten of you are going to, well, of course you're not all students here, but ten of our students are going to Haiti to build homes during the spring break. We talked about that and he said, you must be very proud. And I am very proud. I'm very proud of all of you who are here today. Uh, I've been talking at the school about our adopting a motto, which comes from Leviticus 19.16. Thou shalt not stand idly by while your neighbor bleeds. And that's the emphasis of compassionate therapy. That's the emphasis that all of us, I, I hope, feel at Palo Alto University. And I want to just thank Yo Tom Amberg, who's here today, who went to England, who became involved with this, and who really was the one who put the energy behind this. But of course, you're the ones that have made it a success. I, I don't know who we could have had here that would have drawn such a large group at this hour. I also want to thank the student organization that there are so many of them, but everybody from the um, healing group to the veterans, uh, to the other groups that are here and rec represented today, I, I think it's say so, maybe SECA too, I don't know, uh, but all of our various groups that are here and made this possible. You know, ordinarily we are a faculty-driven institution and we have the finest faculty in the country in this area. But we also have a just remarkable group of students, and they're the ones that organize this conference. Now, this is not faculty-driven, this is student-driven. And it's because they care, they care about the world, they want to make it a better place. They not only want to be outstanding therapists, they want to heal the world. They want to make it a better place. They want to make sure that when they're gone, that the legacy they leave is one of compassion and one of caring. So I want to compliment you for being here. Again, to Dr. Gilbert for how wonderful for him to come and to the students who made this possible. So thank you very much for being here this morning. We are honored. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Calvin. First off, I'd like to say how pleased we are that so many of you were able to join us today for this opportunity to learn from Dr. Paul Gilbert in Compassion Focused Therapy, or CFT. <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to receive some training and supervision in compassion-focused therapy through my supervision at the Granowski Center with Dr. Heineberg. I am de deeply grateful to Dr. Heineberg for this. CFT has become something I'm very excited about, and seeing the response we've gotten for this event and the attendance here today, I can see that I am not alone in my enthusiasm. I'm also here to represent the Student Veterans Organization here at Paul Alto University. When we were approached by the Healing, Spirituality, and Social Action Group to co-sponsor this event along with them and say so, we were all very excited by the prospect of working together to bring this unique opportunity to Palo Alto University. Each of us saw the benefits of CFT from our own perspectives and area of interest. I think compassion is a healing force that we can all say we've experienced and witnessed uh, for ourselves or for those we care for is especially interesting for the veterans group for the potential benefits of this treatment modality for veterans and military populations. We find these populations to be unique in the stressors they're exposed to and compassion to be an incredibly relevant subject for them. Perhaps some of you had the same initial reaction to using compassion as a healing force with veterans as I did. 
that being how could we get this tough group of individuals who tend to value masculinity and independence to buy into CFT as a way to heal. I then thought of the ways in which military populations are incredibly compassionate. I thought of my own experiences in the Marine Corps and the brotherhood I felt. I thought of the family, the sense of family I had with my fellow Marines. I thought of the sense of love I felt for them, as well as the compassion they expressed towards me. Through CFT, the idea that we are all alike in some way, even if it is only that we are all a part of this human experience or the shared humanity, is a powerful concept. It is through these areas of understanding and these relationships that we feel great compassion that we begin to expand these feelings, expressions, and acceptances of compassion. For our veteran and military populations, it may be these feelings of brotherhood and camaraderie that we begin to work on expanding these feelings to others. The SVO group is very excited to learn these techniques and skills from Dr. Gilbert and how they can be applied to military populations as well as the greater population. We cannot thank him enough for taking the time to give us all the opportunity to learn this powerful and beautiful form of treatment. We'd also like to thank all the students and faculties that made this event a possibility, uh, the students that helped organize and prepare for the event, and the professors who attended here today and encouraged their students to join us. On behalf of the Veterans Group, we'd like to thank the HSSA group for spearheading this project and making it a possibility. We've been very inspired by their dedication to this event and thankful that we were able to play a small part in making it happen. Next, I'd like to introduce you to Ting Ting, a warm and compassionate person and their representative for the HSSA group. Hi, everyone. First, I just want to say that we're so happy that all of you guys can be here with us. Um, I'm speaking for everyone who helped plan the event when I say that we kind of just filled with this sense of shock and awe in just how big this event has turned out to be. Um, as a group, we feel really privileged to be able to bring this opportunity to you. Uh, the Healing Spirituality and Social Action Group initially came together because we felt there was a big need for um, awareness to how spirituality and the meaning of life are essentially integral parts of psychology and how that plays into the process of healing. Um, we wanted to provide the PAU community with uh, a, a space to be able to explore these relationships and these ideas, um, which is why we're really advocating for this event. Uh, the idea of healing through compassion really aligns with what our group stands for, and one of Dr. Gilbert's beliefs is that self-compassion is a key part to having genuine compassion for others, and he's really built that into CFT. Um, so what we hope to take away, we hope that you take away from this training today is not just new techniques for you to help your clients, but also that you can utilize this training to foster your own personal growth and really use that to serve your, you know, your work. Um, for us, this whole process of planning the event has been a really big demonstration on how compassionate the PAU community really is. Um, we've had wonderful support from Dr. Calvin and his administrative team. We've had uh, help from the amazing clinic directors, uh, um, Dr. Shadoff and Dr. Howe, and of course, Dr. Macias, who orchestrated the closing of the clinic for the day and made it possible that so many of you guys could be here, faculty and students and um, supervisors. So, we also collaborated with other student organizations who provided financial support and really helped us get the word out to so many of you. Um, even in our daily interactions, we found support. And it was in class that Dr. Walden suggested that we uh, get the training approved for CEUs, and Dr. Howell was really great in walking us through that process. Um, once the planning got underway, we uh, everything just sort of snowballed. We were hoping for 50 people and planning for 20 people to show up. But we, but we ended up with over 160 RSVPs from PAU students and faculty. Um, I have to thank Rhonda and Lenise right now because they were such essential parts in helping us operationalize our aspirations for the event into what you see right now. Um, we had so many people emailing in and asking if they could attend, and 
bring friends and um, uh, their coworkers from practicums. We had people from other programs and um, just clinicians within the community emailing in and seeing if they could also participate today. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have the ability to accommodate everyone, so we couldn't make it an open event. Um, but it really affirms for us that there is a huge desire outside for training and compassion perspectives like from Dr. Gilbert. Um, we wouldn't have been able to put all of this together if it hadn't been for the show of support from everyone here and from the outpour of compassion from the PAU community. One person I'd like to thank in particular is Dr. Heineberg, who first introduced us to Dr. Cal uh, Dr. Gilbert, sorry. And, informed us that he would be visiting Palo Alto so we could invite him to you know, provide this training for us. He's offered us a lot of guidance throughout the entire process and has been instrumental in helping us put this on. Um, we are deeply grateful for his work in all of this and this event wouldn't have been possible without him. I also want to thank our group's mentor, um, Byron Bland, who uh, has been really compassionate and compassionately supporting not only the creation of this event, but also in the life of the group. Um, to us, he is a person that exemplifies what it means to be compassionate. And finally, I want to introduce Dr. Gilbert, whose values really align with the group's values and intentions. He's held trainings all over the world in his work on compassion and was the president of the British Association for Cognitive Behavioral Psychotherapy in 2003. Um, he served on the Government Depression NIC Guideline Committee and has been conducting research on shame and self-criticism for over 30 years. He's currently uh, a professor at the University of Derby and has published and edited over 21 books and hundreds of academic papers and 39 book chapters. He is currently a series editor for a Compassionate Approaches to Life Difficulty series, and he also started a charity called the Compassionate Mind Foundation, which works to promote well-being through scientific understanding and application of compassion. So before we get started, I just want to say that we hope you all have a really, really great time today.